A few weeks ago, the European Commission did issue a strategic paper looking for a policy till 2030. Room to ask a few questions, if not Philippe Lowe, the Director General for Energy. Good afternoon, Philippe. European Commission did issue a green paper about three weeks ago. It's a very important one because it, it addresses a remote horizon, 2030. But by the way, why 2030 should be addressed in a green paper? Well, I think you know Jean-Michel and everyone in the Institute knows that uh, uh, the investments in energy are long term. They're in big lumps and they cover the energy needs uh, far ahead throughout uh, Europe and globally. Um, and uh, in order to make those investments, you have to create the policy and regulatory framework which gives as much predictability to investors and to companies as possible. Another part of the, another aspect of the Green Paper is, is interesting or intriguing. It asks more questions than it gives answers. Does it mean that the European Commission doesn't know what to do with this horizon of 2030? Well, I think everyone would uh, agree that there were two aspects of uh, energy policy uh, decided in Europe um, in the last 10 years, which have been decisive in providing exactly the kind of framework which is needed to orient markets to the outcomes which public policy wants to reach. On the one hand, Europe is uh, dependent on importation of fossil fuels, which are increasingly uh, highly priced and uh, volatile in price, uh, and is dependent in many parts of Europe on one source of supply. So the idea of creating a, a single, open, interconnected, integrated market in Europe has been a vital part of European energy policy for some decade, decades. But it's even more important now when uh, US and uh, China and India and others are not only discovering new sources of energy, such as in the US, but also in China and India, uh, looking for any energy they can get to meet their burgeoning demands as the growth of their economies uh, goes forward. Now, we set targets again at the same time uh, uh, beyond that ambition for a single market for uh, climate change objectives, uh, in particular in the energy industry, which must be the industry which makes the most contribution to uh, climate change uh, policies. And you know the famous 20-20-20 objectives for 2020, 20% 20 uh, reduction in emissions compared with um, uh, 1990 levels, 20% um, improvement in use of energy, and 20% coverage of energy consumption by renewables. Now, of course, that's a fairly clear prospect for uh, investors uh, and governments planning policies, uh, planning programs of investment in 2006 and 2007, when these uh, uh, objectives were first conceived of. But now we're in 2012, and the um, period um, over which um, all our industries are looking is, and banks are looking is way beyond 2020. Now, have we got all the answers? Well, we could have immediately all the answers to the questions we've put in the Green Paper. Um, uh, is, uh, is it uh, right to continue with the sorts of targets we've had so far? Uh, could we do with less targets? Can the market take over uh, where, for example, renewables are at present being supported with subsidy? Uh, haven't some of them become more mature? Have we exhausted all possibilities for finding indigenous sources of gas, conventional and, and unconventional in Europe, and un under what conditions can we exploit them? Now, 
we have as officials and as uh, European commissioners our own personal views. I think it's uh, the essence of democracy, first of all, uh, to inform yourself thoroughly as to what are precisely the conditions out there and what experts feel as the, are the trends. And secondly, to listen to the, uh, all the different stakeholders in this uh, debate about what should be the framework for beyond 2020 before the Commission uh, decides something which it might otherwise have to do in an ivory tower, which I hope it doesn't. The third question is quite natural coming from me. I guess that in 2020 the internal market will be completed. Therefore, it will be a concern only from DG competition. But at DG Energy, the, the today's life will be made basically of public policies like renewable, energy efficiency, or greenhouse gas emissions, but not the internal market anymore. Well, we pointed out, the Commission pointed out in a, in a report um, in November of last year that um, there's been a lot of progress made towards um, uh, bringing about that, um, you know, bringing into reality that vision of a single European market in electricity and gas. Um, but um, we've also said that there's still quite a long way to go. That certainly a lot of progress has been made in in uh, bringing the dynamic of competition into wholesale markets, but at the retail level, we're still far away from the kind of ideal world in which uh, households and industry can find alternative sources of energy on a competitive basis. Uh, a lot of um, uh, final prices are still regulated, and there's a lot of influence of uh, politics uh, as well as regulation at national level on the market. So, first of all, we um, should um, be careful not to be complacent that we're going to reach this objective either by 2014, which is our, uh, our, our um, initial objective, or that all the network codes and other regulations will be fully effective by 2020. <coughs> Secondly, um, we've talked about the climate change challenge. And if you want to make markets work, and I think the France School of Regulation knows that better than anyone, um, markets generally work with less regulation rather than more. Um, but at precisely at the time we're asking for public policy and regulation to pull back from the market in order to let it work effectively, uh, governments and the Commission are required to re-intervene into the market to correct the market failure that the market is actually undervaluing the costs of climate change. So we have public support schemes for renewables. We have um, the challenge that in many areas now, because of the high level of renewables which is expected in the system, there is uh, bound to be intermittency and worries about security of system stability and security of supply. Um, some people are actually proposing that we should uh, finance reserve capacities for that at a national level. So in sticking to the vision of a, a competitive European market in electricity and gas, we've got to make sure that these interventions which are necessary to correct the market failures associated with climate change don't actually refragment the market again, and then we'll be back where we were in the 1980s. Thank you. Thank you for the interview, Philippe, and thank you also for this very inspiring green paper. Thank you.